Hi, everybody. Welcome back and good evening to you. So Chantal did a live and I took a peek at it and there are some points of interest. I hope you guys like the react that I did earlier to her seafood video. I decided to do something different with that and take out the video portion and just leave the audio. A lot of you seem to like that and I'm glad. I did get some further feedback on that. I, one or two people in the comments were saying that they preferred the video with the audio, that they wanted to see the facial expressions of Chantal with the audio, and I totally understand that. Uh, always welcome input. I want to know what you guys feel, what you think, and I respect your opinions. But for those who maybe don't like the audio so much, as I stated earlier, I'm doing it because I'm someone that I've dealt with BED. Chantal is deep in the throes of BED and her content is triggering to people on her channel and potentially triggering on other people's channels as well. It's not for me to tell other content creators how to do their reacts. That's completely up to them. They created the channels. They should be able to do what they want but I'm someone that I've dealt with BED, so I feel comfortable doing reacts to her mukbangs with the video removed. That way, at least, you don't see what she's doing. You know, if she's talking, I'm just focused on the talking. I don't want to see the eating. Doing that kind of react for the first time, honestly, I liked it better because nothing irritated me more than watching her eat. <laughs> you know, I just can't deal with it. It's gross. He's hey, hey, gross. So, yeah, I did that. Had a good time with that. It was so much more relaxing not to watch her. But she did a live, and, you know, she did what she normally does in the live. She didn't really rage. Honestly, I don't think Chantal has the energy to Full on rage anymore. I think she's just so unhealthy. She doesn't have the energy to just really go full throttle like she used to do. And I've also noticed that with her lives, she goes for exactly an hour and a half. I don't know why that is, but she likes to go live late at night and she goes for an hour and a half and then she has to go to bed. It's interesting. I don't know if there's a curfew or there's a reason why she cuts it off that early, but she does. So she talks about different things in her live. Uh, interestingly enough, earlier in the day, I was part of Erie Pepperoni's uh, live chat. Erie was all prepped to review something else, and then Chantal went live. <laughs> it made everybody in the chat mad. <laughs> and we we're like, no, no, Chantal, no. Because we were just settled in to watch something different. And of course, she had to go live. And the title of her live is Make Me Laugh. In my opinion, that is emotionally manipulative. Because with a title like that, she's basically signaling people that she's sad, something is wrong, she's upset. So of course, her subscribers are going to be like, what's wrong with Chantal? And flock to her live. Just seeing what's going on. It's emotionally manipulative. Get people worried and upset and concerned for her. And then when they get to the live, she's like, hey, just kidding. <laughs> She'll use anything, get a view, anything at all. And what's really sad is that while I was in Erie Pepperoni's live, and Erie is a much smaller channel than Chantal's. Erie had nearly as many people in her life as Chantal had in hers. <laughs> go, Erie, go. You tell her. You tell her, girl. Tell her. We love the Donna Pepperoni. Okay. So we're going to get into Chantal's live, but why don't we cover some Twitter stuff first? Yes. Hold on a second. Oops. Hold on a minute. I got to make sure that I am where I need to be. Like, I, hey, when I come to class, I have my notes, but I got to make sure they're in order. So let's just go here first. Okay, I've got everything straightened. And there we are. There we are. 
I'm so good with the tabs. Okay. So for those who want to join me on Twitter, you can find me there at Wild Girl Sarah. Let's start here with Mo Translates. Can I just say, we missed you, Mo. It's so good to have you back. I hope you've been doing well, ma'am. But Mo says, I think I'm kind of caught up with girl world. People from my culture or from the Middle East care so much about image, reputation, class, etc., because it reflects back on the family. After the poop scandal, I doubt Salah will stick around. I don't think Salah is with Chantal anymore. I could be wrong. Well, that's the rumor, Mo, that he, for the most part, is out of the picture. I think it's just hanging on for whatever a little bit of money or benefits he gets from Chantal, but for the most part, he's out. You got to know he's upset because I'm sure he was thinking not only would he get money out of Chantal and some nice little bonuses, some gifts like the car and the trip, but also build a certain kind of social media presence off of her back. And then this whole thing with Kai Bella happened and his presence online is forever ruined. Even if he were to leave Chantal physically behind, if anybody looks up his name, they're going to find Chantal. They are forever linked. So physical presence or not, like if he has any plans of doing anything online, like he just needs to scrap that. But it's interesting that you say that about those in the Middle East. They care a lot about public image, reputation, class, etc. And you're right. I'm sure in the Middle East, that family is very, very important. And it makes me wonder, you know, why hasn't Salah's family stepped in already? What are they waiting for? I'm sure they've gotten wind of at least some of the things that Chantal has done and said, things that potentially could make the family look bad or put them in some sort of, a, of trouble. I've heard that Salah's father is a very influential man, a very important man in the Middle East. He's got a very important job. And I know that Salah is an adult man, but as his father, can he not do anything? Can he not talk to Salah or pull him away some way. Honestly, guys, I'm going to let you know, I am, by my thoughts, I am just trying to manifest that into this whole thing. I'm not reaching out. I'm not doing anything physical, but I'm, I'm wishing that Salah's father would just put his foot down on this whole nonsense. I feel if there's anybody that could put a stop to all of this stuff, it would have to be his father. If anybody could pull rank on Chantal, I would think he would be the one. And my tarot cards have said the emperor is there. I don't know who the emperor is, but I'm getting that dad energy. And it would take somebody of a higher rank of sorts to go over Chantal's head and put things in motion. So I'm praying that it's the last father. <laughs> like, like this whole thing ends really, really soon because it just makes no kind of sense. But you're right. Like people from the Middle East, it's about reputation, class, image. You know, the family is very important. So why hasn't the family done something by now? Like what, what is going on with that? All right. Shaking but not stirred has a joke for us saying, how many narcissists does it take to change a light bulb? None. They use gas lighting. <laughs> okay, okay, that was a good one. Ah, DX says, Chantal just said she went to Qatar for a weekend by herself sometime last year and stayed in a luxurious apartment without telling us. When was that? Yeah, when, when, when did that happen? I, I've been watching her content all the way through when did this occur because i can't remember that <laughs> uh, what, what did this when did this happen i i smell lies what, wait what, what was that yeah the, the, i smell the scent of deception heavy in the air so it must be a lie okay so enough with the twitter stuff let's stop the screen and let's move on over to the live itself and let's get started with that. We're not going to start at the beginning. There's really no need because 
the first 15 minutes she's busy saying hi to people and just rambling and essentially just waiting for more and more and more and more people to show up because that's what she does if there's not enough people in the room she's not going to bring up anything of interest it's just milling about looking at the clock running up the meter and waiting for more people to join up she does a little bit of snarkiness here and there in the stream but unfortunately there's no full-on rage Every time she does a live like this, though, it's pretty apparent what's going on. She likes to do these lives late at night. She likes to do her four or five page essay rage community post late at night. She's in Kuwait. She's lonely. She's bored. Salah is not there. He's not spending time with her. So she's frustrated. She's stressed out. And... She wants to talk to her audience and she wants to take out her frustration on the reactors, even though we're not to blame for her situation. So I'm just going to turn this on and I'm going to give my thoughts. So let's go. Hi, Wajiha. I mean, how about like every time they go live, I snipe them and see. How Do it. Do it. We dare you. Do it. She's mad because during this live, other people, they went live and they were restreaming her content. They were reacting to her live while she was live. So she's trying to threaten us. Oh, every time they go live, I'm going to snipe them. Oh, please do. Please do. Step into the arena, Chantal. Go ahead, big mama. We're waiting for you. Haven't you tried that, though, in the past? Didn't you try your hand at being a reactor? Didn't you try to roast Charlie Gold and FFG? You did, and you failed miserably. You don't know how to be a good reactor. You suck at it. You're so lame at it. But if you want to stream snipe somebody, please do. But that would mean you would have to fire up StreamYard. And I know how much you hate StreamYard because the last time you fired up StreamYard, you couldn't use your filters. You saw yourself in the camera and 60 seconds later, you turned that camera off and never used it again. So if you want to stream snipe somebody, you're going to have to use something like OBS or StreamYard. And OBS is a little bit more complicated to set up than StreamYard. But you're going to have to do a program like that to actually do the sniping or as it were restreaming but you want to snipe you want to restream please please we're begging you do it oh it'll be so much fun do it that'll be interesting content for once no they like it i want to beat up our grandpa yep Uh, I love everything dill pickle too. I love it. I heard that there's a pickle lip gloss. I want that. <clears throat> Imagine her dropping everything just to run and snipe you. They can't have anything going on. Just sad. <laughs> Barbara. Yeah. You know, in defense of people who do the stream sniping, restreaming look chantal you can see right here her live went on for an hour and 29 minutes a lot of us we don't have time to sit in front of the computer and wait for her to go live and then after her live is over gotta wait for the video portion and the chat portion to show up the chat portion, depending on the length of the live, it takes forever to show up if you want to include that. Ain't got time for all that. Ain't got time to sit there and wait for the video and the chat to show up and then turn around for an hour and a half, two hours to do a video react like what I do. Then once you do the react, got to design the thumbnail, got to upload it to YouTube. And again, with, some, with a live like this, an hour and a half, it takes you a good 30 or 40 minutes for it to fully process and go through all the checks. 
and to upload. That's a lot of time for one video, for one reaction. And nobody got time for all that. <laughs> you know, we got things to do. We, you know, we got to work. We got stuff to do. So it's, if you got the time and she goes live, if you got the time right then and there, do it. Because you might be there a while. And not only that, when it comes to her rage lives, we know Chantal. If she's raging, if she's upset, guaranteed. The moment that it's over, an hour later or a day later, it's gone. So anybody who wants to see the content, you got to get it when the getting's good. So she doesn't like people stream sniping or restreaming. Well, she doesn't leave all of her content up. She wants to be able to say a bunch of awful things and then get rid of it before YouTube will, you know, slap her on the bottom. So we as reactors, if we want to get the content, we, we look at her mood, we see what's going on. If she's calm, more than likely it's going to be there for the next day or two or week. If she's raging, got, got to jump on it. She's not raging here, but... I'm just explaining the process, the thinking with the reactors. <laughs> you guys are certainly making me laugh. Elder abuser and unemployed queen. Yeah. Yeah. What time is it? It's like middle of the day there. No. Her job is stealing my content. Nobody steals it if you still own it. <laughs> Look at her being having that victimhood. Isn't that special? They steal my content. How can you steal something from somebody if you still possess it? Stealing something implies that you no longer have it. Somebody else does. <laughs> we just have the better version of your content. That's all. The more entertaining version. And adding absolutely nothing informative whatsoever. That's also not true because if that were true, you could throw a, a strike. YouTube would not allow that. You have to make the content transformative, which the reactors do. And that's the part of the reason why you're so mad. The fact we got all the stuff from your present and your past. And sometimes that past stuff comes back around, doesn't it, Chantal? Those retro reacts, you don't like them. You don't like when people react to that stuff again, bring it back around to all your new beezers that you're lying to. Hey, you do it. It's, it's a thing. It's an absolute thing. <laughs> you don't own YouTube. You are not the CEO of YouTube. You don't make the rules. You just break the rules and you get away with it. But you a rule breaker complaining about people who follow terms of service. Imagine that. I know. <laughs> Pickle lip gloss. I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Eleven thirty where they live. God, go out and enjoy the day. Been recording lately, and I don't care who knows. Got mafia friends here, so bring it on. <laughs> she doesn't even talk through the reactions. It helps someone change a tire. Went on about my daily. Oh, what is this? Hold on. Let me let me go back here. So Italian Tidbit says, been reporting lately, big smiley face. And I don't care who knows either. I've got mafia friends here, so bring it on. What the F? Ma'am or sir, what exactly are you threatening people with? We're reactors. Are you mad? Is something wrong with you? Like you, you need help. You're reporting people for what, though? For just reacting to a video? So on top of the reporting, you're going to threaten people with the mo with the mafia? <laughs> like, we're, everybody's supposed to be afraid of you? Like, something's wrong with you. Now, it explains why you're in Chantal's audience. Lee Aaron's four stores before I went to the washroom and discovered I had a little Hitler mustache. Oh, this, this comment, Zoe says, people in the chat who mention other reaction channels are only trying to trigger your anger 
which you said you weren't going to engage with them anymore. <sighs> you, you, Zoe, you have to know that a good many of the people in Chantal's chat are trolls, especially if she does open chat like what she's doing. But Chantal wants those views and she wants more audience members. So she opens up the chat. She could do members only chat, but she doesn't. But how about the people in her audience that talk food with her and try to trigger her to eat? What about those people? <laughs> they do a lot of harm to her. Grease streak? Oh no. For people looking at you like, what the heck? Middle of the day there. <laughs> I don't know. YouTube is useless. So it's like late later here. It's like I don't even know what time it is. Maybe 10, 9, 10. Yeah, it it's 9 p.m., 10 p.m. in Kuwait. So if Salah were out working, wouldn't he be done with work by now? Where's your husband, Chantal? <laughs> <laughs> we know where he is. He's in the red room without you. You are there all by your doggone self. You and him are supposed to be a married couple. Where's your husband? Shouldn't he be home by now? Why aren't you blowing up his phone? No, it's late here. He's not working. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> you miss our videos? Thanks, Pink Stars. It's like late evening here. I didn't check the time before I went. The last time I checked the time, it was 8.30, but it's got to be later than that now. Hi, Pam. Hi. You miss a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Creepy. I feel like I'd love to just watch you get a makeover, like a full glam face. They have a lot of salons here so i might go i'm going to be going to the dentist probably tomorrow or the next day to get like a full cleaning done and they're like supposedly whiten and clean their deep clean your teeth and i'm going to be getting x-rays on my mouth to see like um if i have any cavities or problems with my teeth <clears throat> So Messy Girl brings up an interesting point. Messy Girl says, is it a walk-in dentist? You don't have an appointment? Yeah, I've never known a dentist, a good dentist, to just get walk-ins. Usually you have to have an appointment. So how in the world is she going to get a dentist uh, visit in without an appointment? And she's not the kind of person that gets up early in the morning to go anywhere. Like if you go to the dentist, wouldn't you normally have to get up in the morning and be prepared? I just can't see her doing that. Bullying, defamation, stealing, a lot of criminal, I know Italian, I know. And it's really hard to defend yourself, you know, like I'm not like, celebrity i'm not super affluent you know and i'm not even in the same country anymore so it's hard <clears throat> it's a walk-in dentist yeah i've never heard of such a thing maybe they do exist but in my experience i've never seen just a walk-in dentist with no clients with no appointments lined up because dental work usually takes a while maybe they had that in kuwait i could be wrong Anyone who, like, there's so many dentists here <laughs> and clinics. You just walk in. And correct me if I'm wrong, but if you are a first time client, don't you have to go through a whole process? Like if you have any kind of dental work, you know, they want to do x-rays and all that to see what they're working with. They just can't have you sit down in a chair, open up your mouth and know what's going on. Like they, they do a bunch of stuff to see the condition of your teeth. I'm not scared, no. You don't have to defend yourself anymore. Yeah. I'm trying to just live my life. Waiting for a rage. Imagine that's your life, waiting for someone to rage. I could never. 
I can't, I can't understand that. I'm a YouTube celeb. Well, we don't get any protection from anything. She's criticizing the reaction channels for waiting for the rage. I've explained to you guys why we're so interested in the rages. It's really, really simple. Why do we wait for her to rage? A couple of reasons. Because when she rages, that's when we get the most truth out of Chantal. That's when she's her real self is when she rages. Plus the rages are the most interesting. Now, if she had other interesting content, we look forward to that. But it's been what, seven or eight years on YouTube? It, same mundane food content, her constantly talking about food, boring us to death with the same subjects over and over, going out to the reaction channels over and over, talking about BBJ over and over. I mean, it's a broken record and we're tired of hearing the same song. So when there's a rage, there might be something interesting. We know she's got a lot of pent up, bottled up anger, frustration. There's so many things in Chantal that she wants to say, but she's buttoning her lip. She's like a firecracker, just wanting to explode. We know what's in there. We can feel it. We can feel it, Chantal. It's dying to come out, but you won't let it out because for whatever reason, you want to hang on to Salah, even though he doesn't want to hang on to you. You got a home in Kuwait. You don't have a home in Canada. But if you let go on Salah, you may not have a home anymore. And he might let go of you. And that's the only thing you got left. But the rages, we know it's coming. We know it. I mean, the community post you did this morning, you would let just a little bit of that rage out. Although you're raging about something that we just want to move on. It's a done subject. But you let some of that rage out in a form of a almost a college essay. <laughs> and the thing that made me giggle is back in the day, you used to rage and make money with your rage. Now you're doing it for free. I love that for you. Thanks, Bubbles. Thanks, Pink Stars. What do they do with wisdom teeth? I don't know. Garbage? It's hard to believe YouTube does nothing. I know. <laughs> Kino. <laughs> oh, geez. Some of the people in her chat, they crack me up. This person, Barbara, says, Chantal, you are paying people's rent bills. Oh, please. <laughs> I already, now I know you don't have a channel. Listen, YouTube does not pay that much. The, very few reaction channels are making the big money. The smaller channels, not so much. It is what it is. You know, like you, you make earn a little bit of money, but not that much. But to walk around thinking, oh, Chantal, she has to be on YouTube. All these reactors depend on her. They don't have other jobs. They don't have their own money. Without Chantal, they'd be out on the street. Please, please. Without YouTube, Chantal would be out on the street because what else could she do? Honestly, I mean, let's, let's think about this now. If YouTube said no more monetization for you, Chantal, no more monetizing videos about food or or food content if they shut off the money faucet what would she do she's not employable she's got a horrible self-image anybody searches her name on the internet they're going to find all kinds of shocking stuff physically she's not in the condition to work or be on her feet she couldn't even sit at a desk and answer a phone what would she do without youtube anybody that has a reaction channel we either have jobs already we can go get another one i mean we got options she's the one that doesn't have options this is her only thing right here 
There's literally no filters right now. <laughs> Liar. Sorry, that was loud. I apologize. I just got excited. Liar. There's no filters on. There's no filters on. I can spot three. You've got your skin smoothing filter. You have rosacea on both cheeks right here and right here. That skin smoothing filter, it does a lot to cover it up a little bit, but you can still see the redness on both your cheeks. So there is the skin smoothing filter. Then you've got the contour filter, which starts at the bottom half of your cheeks and goes down to make your face look less round. So that's two filters. Then you might have an eye filter going on right here. You're, you're not natural. You're just not. Why are you, why lie to people? Why not just say, yeah, I've got a few filters going right now. I mean, you lie when you don't have to. Oh. And when I'm filmed in like my walking videos, it's filmed with an iPhone that doesn't have any filters. So yeah, we love that. <laughs> it's just an excuse. <laughs> And just because you're filming on an iPhone, see, Chantal loves her Samsung phone because they have built-in filters. But even if you have an iPhone, there's any number of beauty apps and apps that you, that you can add to the footage to alter your appearance. So the iPhone doesn't have built-in filters, but you can upload all kinds of apps to kind of change things around. So to say that the iPhone doesn't have filters, they do if you can upload apps on there. Free dental for press, Ellie. Thanks, Pam. I, I That means a lot. Thank you for enjoying my videos. I like being myself. I don't have to listen to anyone tell me what to do. That is very freeing. <laughs> this chat is so nice compared to FFG's like night and day. Yeah, because we don't congregate here just to hate on one person and be a complete jerk. No, That's you hate on everybody, including yourself. The difference. I just made Italian sausage, grilled rice pilaf, and roasted veggies for late lunch, early dinner. That sounds really good. Illegally blown. Yeah, I'm very feeling very peaceful. I'm very calm because I'm tired. <laughs> I was up pretty early today. Yeah, I know, Pam. Excuse me. Falcor! My favorite. I used to love that movie. Barbecue. <laughs> Barbara. <laughs> me. <laughs> Dreaming of Everest. <sighs> True. A lot of nice places to walk. I like swimming, Brooke. Is the so Falcor, Falcor Luck Dragon says, what's going to happen to the couples channel? I can answer that for you. It's pretty much a done deal. I don't think Salah is going to be back. I think this whole thing with Kai Bella, that gave him the perfect out. He wanted out and him getting busted with talking to Kai Bella, that was a perfect out for him. It gave him the perfect reason not to play the part of the husband and have to pinch Chantal's cheek and act like he cares about her and appear on camera with her. I don't think he really wanted to do that in the first place. He just did it because he was getting paid. But this whole thing with Kai Bella actually worked in his favor. He doesn't have to be around her as much. And she's miserable. She desperately wants him there to brag about and say, this is my husband. She wants him there for companionship. But now she's flying solo and she hates it. 
food better in Kuwait than Canada? I think so. <laughs> I like the type of food here. LOD. Yeah, I've talked a lot about it before. I can definitely talk about that again. It's just on hold. Our couple's channel's on hold for now. Can you do a fish haul, <laughs> Jenna? Yeah, she won't come right out and say, look, the whole thing with me and Salah, it's pretty much a done deal. She won't come out and say it. Because then people in her chat would say, well, what happened? You guys aren't together anymore? Like, he's 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 pretty much done. Salah is part of her ego. And she's a sore loser. And she doesn't like to admit when she's lost. She just doesn't know how to take the L and take it gracefully. So she's going to say vague things like, oh, it's on hold for now. No, it's a done deal. Just like his gaming channel is also a, a done deal. How can he go back on his gaming channel and do gaming streams without having a bazillion people come in there and say, scat man? <laughs> he knows it's going to happen. And I'm sure he and you run around YouTube just waiting for the reactors to stop talking about all the Kybella stuff. And guess what? You can wait and you can wait and you can wait. We're never going to stop talking about it. We're going to keep it in the public eye. We're going to remind everybody. So the couple's channel, done. Gaming channel, done. His physical presence in your live streams, also done. You might try to bring him back, but that's going to be disastrous. So all that he can do right now is go fetch your food and be in ghost mode when he mods for you. I don't know. I don't, I don't like cooking fish. It always, I always mess it up, except that one time on the video I made it good, you know? <sighs> You're like a yo-yo chance, Juicy Taro. Yeah, wait. It's hard. Why can't you cook but only show your hands? I'm I'm the cook here. I'm the one doing all the cooking. <laughs> it's not Cheetos. It's, um, and I did wash my hands. It's stains. I don't know if it's like turmeric they put in it. No, that, that stain on her thumb is not turmeric. If y'all remember, she bought all those bags of snacks for guests, right? All that stuff is supposed to be for the imaginary friends that come over. Although we never see them and we never hear about them. She never tells us any story times about friends that come over. Those huge bags of snacks that she eats out of. Same thing with all the candy bars. That's supposed to be for guests. And yet, in this live stream, Chantal shows all the candy bars. And you're going to see... The candy bars that she shows in the live stream are different than the original batch. So she's already eaten the first batch and is starting on batch number two. And she bought over 20 candy bars the last time. So she's eaten all that sugary stuff. But um, those sunflower seeds, the barbecue ones. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Italian, yeah. So Bloop says, girl, go back to Canada. You were out and about the whole time you were there. Yes, she was. She was much more active in Canada than she is in Kuwait. And you can tell the difference because she's much unhealthier in Kuwait than she was in Canada. I mean, granted, she stayed indoors a lot in Canada, but she had the choice to get in her car and go somewhere. She can't do that in Kuwait. Kuwait's been disastrous for her health. There's a lot of sandy beaches, yeah. It's like most of them have like a rocky area and like lots of sand. So. <laughs> we weren't smoking every day. I don't smoke every day, but like yesterday I smoked, yeah. I love the couple's channel. <laughs> so Shan's... Juicy Terrell says, I'm sorry, but I agree. I think you smile brighter in Canada. Yeah, because she was more at ease. She was bored. She missed the law, but she was more herself. 
She seemed more relaxed in her in her element in Canada. It was weird, you know, like she was happier in Canada, but she ran back to Kuwait. She's been nothing but miserable. She talked about how much she missed the law, but now that she's back in Kuwait, she hardly sees them, which is causing all of these rages and all this upset. And yet she won't do the smart thing and the thing that makes the most sense and go back home. It would be so simple for her to say to Salah, look, it's been a year. Nothing good is happening here. Let's just agree to disagree. We're different people. Financially speaking, this is not working out for either of us. I'm going to go back to Canada and I will rent a motel room if I have to. And I'll just bees like crazy and get back to business and you can do whatever you need to do. And let's just part ways. Let's just call it quits, but she won't call it quits, even though she's sitting at the poker table going full tilt. And it's all because of her pride. She doesn't want to admit that she made a bunch of bad choices and she's lost. Hey, Blue Ridge Bunny. There's spaghetti here, but it's not like a calm. It's like... um. If you have like an Italian restaurant or something. The type of pasta that's more um, popular is bees. No interest in Florida at all. Uh, except for Disney, but even that right now. You know? Zoe, I don't talk about my relationship at all. Ah, Zoe says, Foodie Beauty, would you say you have the upper hand in the relationship? Most of the relationships you've been in, you seem to be the dominant one. Well, she likes to be in control. She likes to control men. And she likes to control them with her money. The last independent man in her life was BB. And BB do, did what he could for Chantal. He was a good man. But she was way too much to handle. And he just said, I'm done. And he had a right to say that because she cheated on him multiple times. She confessed that. So she cheated. Things were not good between them. And they parted company. He kicked her out. And after BB, every man that she had around her was a man that she made financially dependent on her. She, did, she wanted to trap a man with her so he would not escape. With Chantal, it's not about finding an equal relationship, you know, equal measure for equal measure. It's about finding a man who is financially not well off, make him codependent on her in every way possible so that he can't get away from her. That is how she keeps men around her, not by love, not by having positive attributes, but by trapping them to where they can't escape or at least as much as she can prevent them from escaping. All online anymore, zero. Sorry, but. Rebe, I was thinking of getting Netflix just for that and also for the show of Love on the Spectrum. Hi, Karen. Brianna, thank you. India bees. <laughs> I would do one, yeah, Nikki, DNA report. <clears throat> no Canada, too many people in the bushes. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> Abu Dhabi, dude. <laughs> TN. You in this hall. Heck no, Stanley. And I don't plan on it. She ruined it for Canadian visas. Yeah, she did. Hi, little nitty. The old survivors. <laughs> I've been watching old forensic files. Okay, and she leaves the camera right here. She gets up and she leaves. And she brings back some snacks for Julia. It looks like. Isn't it, is it illegal for people to like use your face? 
on merch. But it's like people being sued for that. I'm not talking about puppets, but Arabic classes. I don't know. Hi, females. How are you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? You're not getting more treats. You look like church. You look like church from Pet Cemetery. Winston Church. The way she holds Julia bothers me so much. How can you be a cat owner and not know how to properly hold the cat to where they feel comfortable and safe in your arms? Yes. Yes. I, unless I'm already your friend and I already talked to you on social media, I'm, I, I'm just like, I, I hate, I don't want to sound snobby and I don't want to sound like, I don't want to talk to people, but I don't, if I seem like distant and I don't answer a lot of comments, it's because I'm, I don't trust anybody that I don't know in real life. So yeah, but you don't have any friends in real life. <laughs> what social circle do you have? I mean, you don't have to tell us all your business but you're all about the story times and you'll use anything for content. All the story times you tell us have to do with people from your past. And I feel that's because there's nothing new happening in your present. So you have to recycle stories from your past and people from your past to have topics of conversation. You make the decision to do these live streams like an hour and a half at a time now you're starting to do them more frequently so every time you come live you have to have something to talk about for at least an hour and a half and if there's nothing new going on in your life i mean what do you do where do you go you don't tell us about the friends that you have the conversations you might have you don't tell us about places that you go or any friends you might have in kuwait i mean you've got nothing to report that's what makes these lives so boring. And that's why the reactors look towards the rage. Cause we know you're mad. <laughs> you're so mad, but you don't want to let it out. Unfortunately. I mean, I think I have reason to feel that way. You know, I just, um, yeah, it's just like, I don't know. I just keep to myself a lot. Yeah. You do have to watch your back. For sure. Hi, Gabrielle. Well, since your back is always against the couch, I don't think you have to worry about watching your back. I think you're pretty safe that way. Yeah, Kina. You can't realistically have friendships with like every single person. And friendships are like take time to develop setting boundaries. Yeah, exactly. I don't trust anyone, especially on the online. I don't. I've been screwed over way too many times by people like, and I just don't trust. And I'm, I think like, I've never been, I'm, I mean, you know, like, yeah, exactly. Rebe, like, yeah. Boundaries. Exactly. Um, Imagine that the biggest Connor scammer liar manipulator, control freak on YouTube, afraid of being backstabbed, afraid of being lied to, afraid of being scammed. Somebody who does wrong to other people, not wanting the same wrong to happen to her. So it's not that I don't like people. Like, it's not that I'm like snobby. It's just... I don't know how to explain it. Like, how would, I don't know. Do you guys know what I mean? Oh, you're snuggling your grandson? The last two that stopped you in the back were followers and supporters at one time. Yeah, and, like, the one just was, like, obviously too needy. They were like, well, it's because you don't appreciate us that we did. I did this to you. Like, talk about psycho. So, no, I'm not, like, what? I don't owe you anything. It doesn't give you a right to try and insert your life and self in my life. Okay, can I say something about that? Okay. So when you have a channel, anybody, any channel on YouTube, with the content that you create, 
with the live chats that you do, with the topics that are discussed, you are showcasing who you are, what your channel is about, and you are cultivating a certain feeling, a certain comfort zone, if you will. The problem with Chantal's channel is that she overshares everything about herself. She draws people in with bad things, personal things, with all of that negative oversharing. She tells people every single thing that's wrong with her, about her BED, about this, about that, talking about her STDs. She shares things with her audience that really normally you only share with, say, family or friends or maybe in a support group. So she creates this atmosphere, this manipulative atmosphere of I'm opening up to you guys. I trust you guys. You guys are my friends. Like coming closer, coming closer, coming closer. And so people in her audience, they might get very, very attached to Chantal or feel like they're really, really close to her, that, that she really trusts them, that she looks at them as being almost on a friend level when she doesn't. She's very manipulative. She's all about that trauma dumping life. She's all about that looking for people with issues and problems and She's, look, she's a broken person, a manipulative person looking for other broken people. People that have maybe some heavy stuff going on. She's looking for those people to bond with her, to be part of her audience. Because if there's stuff wrong with her and there's stuff wrong with people in her audience, they might feel like they found a kindred spirit in Chantal in some way and stick around her and believe her every word. Broken people are easy to manipulate if they get around the wrong person and she is the wrong person. She's a manipulative, lying narcissist who finds a weakness and exploits it to the fullest. So if you get people in your audience, Chantal, that they get emotionally attached or upset because you created this atmosphere of you're all my friends and I care about you so much and I appreciate you. You know, like if, if they get attached to you and then they get upset, maybe it's because of the vibe that you created with the oversharing and, and the trauma dumping and the trauma bonding. Maybe that has something to do with you. Yeah. A little nitty. I love talking to you guys here and like there are some people that I trust and have been friends with through the years. They've been followers for years and I know I've talked to them for years. Hi, Luxillian. Um, but people are just too unstable in a bad way. Lulu. Yeah. Hi, Zaina. So that's in my opinion, Chantal, you are a bit unstable. And you're looking for people perhaps that are also unstable and you take advantage. But imagine you over there saying, well, some people in the audience are a bit unstable. Ma'am, have you looked in the mirror? <laughs> you need to take a good hard look. Yeah. Like right about now. Like this minute. That's why. <laughs> I have to be more aware of like the whole concept of like parasocial relationships and hi Lexi. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> but there are like few people that like have my phone number, but I trust them, you know, and um, I know they would never do anything, <laughs> but you know, you, you never know. You sure about that? <laughs> Are you sure about that? Are you sure? Because let's go over the track record. Let's really go over it, Chantal. You were with Natter. 
you brought Natter to YouTube. What happened? A Beezer, Dee Dee, took Natter away from you. Then you got with Salah. What happened? Salah started talking to a Beezer, Kai Bella. So, you know, like twice in a row, Beezers took your men away from you. Not that it was that hard. They really weren't attached to begin with. But still, you know, you trusting your Beezers. <laughs> See what happens? It, was, it wasn't the reactors that ruined your relationships. It was your own doggone Beezers. But I do trust them. Hi, Teardrop. Go ahead and do that. See what happens. Yeah, Block Zillion, like. Hi, Fatima. Hello. Sure, I can say hi to you. <laughs> I have to protect myself more, you know. You know how she can protect herself more? Keeping her mouth shut. Stop oversharing. Stop trauma dumping and trauma bonding with people. She always talks about a private life, but yet she keeps nothing private. Eventually, she opens her mouth. She has to open her mouth. She does live streams. She does videos. She's got to have something to talk about. So she opens her mouth and then she overshares and then she complains about people commenting on what she's overshared, you know? <laughs> she talks about parasocial relationships, but Chantal doesn't like real life interaction to the point where she could easily come online and dump all of her garbage on thousands of people that she doesn't have to look in their faces, but one person alone doing therapy is a problem. She she doesn't want to be alone in a room with a person that can actually see her and talk to her and give an unbiased opinion and actual help. She's comfortable being behind a camera. That way, if anybody says anything critical, they have an opinion, they have a feeling, she doesn't have to look them in the face. She doesn't have to face them. She doesn't have to see nor hear nor feel their responses. And by doing so, she's escaping the consequences of something she might say to them that might upset them. She's lived so long in this YouTube life that she can't live in real life. She avoids it. I'm a people person, but people have, yeah. Don't wear your heart on your sleeve, yeah. No one's going to take that personally. <laughs> well, some people do. Like, um, you know. Mr. Yeah, stalker vibes. I like, I live by that don't trust anyone. <laughs> Is it buffering? Yeah, Lexi. Oh, I did eat. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you never have to worry about that. <laughs> Yeah, I've got a theory about that. So the reason that Chantal can come on and do these live streams and not be eating the entire thing is that before the live stream begins, she goes to town on the food and she eats. And that might be part of the reason that during her live streams, even though they're for only an hour and a half, she's yawning throughout the, time, the entire thing. You know, you eat a bunch of food, you're going to feel sluggish, you're going to feel tired, you want to go to sleep. She's constantly yawning. Chantal's got an issue with food. So she's able to sit there for an hour and a half and not just like ravenously eat. You got to know it's because she stuffed herself stupid before the camera was turned on. Do you have rosacea? Yeah, shy. Yeah, I do. Coleslaw? I like coleslaw. If they take it personally, you especially should not trust them. Yes. So many people are horrible. Wash your face and eat some yummies. <laughs> so many horrible people in real life, but worse online. Yep. Thanks, Barbara. 
Yeah, it does take time to trust others. It does. Um, please don't read out the lame jokes. No, I don't wear my hijab to bed. <laughs> no. Susan is always sniping and making dumb jokes. I know. I'm so against stream sniping. Like, <laughs> I wish there was something that can be done about it. I really do. Hey, Chantal. Nanny, nanny, boo, boo. <laughs> She's like, I hate stream sniping. <laughs> well, hate away. Hate away. Hashtag stay mad. Nothing you can do about it. Not your platform. Make your own platform. Make your own website where you make the rules. You would reinforce the rules. Make a corporation. You're not going to do it. So as long as you're on somebody else's platform, it's their rules. It's their playground. You don't control it. Deal with it. Just deal with it. Because none of these people would appreciate it if I did that to them. We go ahead. I, I, I said it in the beginning of this react, ma'am, please, 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 please do it. Go ahead. We're not afraid. We're waiting. Stream snipe somebody. React to them. We're waiting. We're not scared. We're not running scared over here. Do it. Go ahead. You'll be humiliated. You'll be embarrassed. You'll be roasted. Go ahead. That might be some great content. Because you might be stream sniping somebody they're replying to you via their live stream the back and forth will be glorious go ahead it won't last long but it'll still be fun while it lasts stole their content <laughs> he likes pot pie it's not his favorite but he likes it honestly i don't even know why she's all upset or outrage. This is fake outrage. That's what this is. I don't know why she's so upset. Have y'all seen anything in this live stream that is worth protecting? That is worth getting outraged over? It's Chantal sitting on a couch making whatever conversation. It's no big deal. She's barely talking about anything. Where's the outrage coming from? She's not doing anything unique or groundbreaking or especially interesting. So why get outraged over that? Is she outraged because her channel, her views are going to suck? And then other reaction channels are going to show her content, add some great commentary, add some humor, some wit, some fire, and get twice as many views? Maybe, maybe that's it. The fact that the reaction channels, we work harder. We care about entertaining our audiences and adding our intelligence. And when you care about your content, when you're passionate about it, when you care about the people that come to your channel, it shows when you have a, I don't care about myself, nor my audience attitude that also shows. So if you don't like the low views and the low paycheck, Chantal, work on that. Yeah. Mm. What else is now? So Bloop says, Foodie Beauty Natter is live showing your only hands stuff with the fruit and the spatula. So sad. He, he's so desperate to stay attached to Chantal. It is so sad. <coughs> but that's because that's when he got the most attention, the most views, the most money. He won't let go of her. But let's be real. She won't let go of him either. You got to know that while she's in Kuwait, alone, miserable, sad, frustrated, she's thinking about Natter. Because Natter accepted her as she was. She didn't have to put on a completely different persona and a disguise just to be accepted a little bit. 
I don't know why she doesn't just go back to Natter. I mean, Natter, you know, broke her back every once in a while. You know, she could buy him groceries, give him money. He might put up with her every once in a while. She'd be happier with Natter than she is with Salah. And if you're going to be with a sugar baby, be with one that is willing to get physical with you, Chantal. Like, why are you wasting your time with Salah? If you can get more from Natter, not that I like Natter, he's a scumbag, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you're going to have a sugar baby, do it in your home country. Save the money on plane tickets. What else is new? Another one I wish would disappear from the internet, but YouTube doesn't care. You know, she says she hates Natter. Somebody in her chat just told her, girlfriend, he's streaming your only ham stuff on his channel. Couldn't she cause some trouble for him if she really, really wanted to? Yes, she could. She could have caused trouble for him a long time ago. She had plenty of motive. She had plenty of incentive. She's gone after other channels. Why not go after his? You want to know why? Because she still wants Natter. She's still thinking about Natter. Chantal brags about her wrath. She's a wrathful person. And when she's wrathful, she'll go full scorched earth. So if she hasn't gone 100% scorched earth at somebody. Even after saying they've done her so much wrong, you have to wonder why. Why won't she cross that line? And why hasn't Natter gone after her the way that he could? He won't cross that line either. Maybe it's because they both need each other for different reasons. And they're keeping the door open. And so neither one of them will cross that line. So... Despite the fact that she has claimed he was highly abusive. Whatever happened must not have been that bad. Because she's still attached to him. And she still wants him. Because, you know, when you're done, you're done. You burn the bridge. You turn your back and you walk away from it. But she just won't burn that bridge. She still wants to cross it. I could probably strike him for the OnlyFans stuff. But you, but you won't. You will not. I was under a paywall, and that's like private, like, sexual stuff, right? I think I can. She won't do it. She's talked about taking Natter to court. That never happened. She talked about taking FFG to court. That didn't happen. She's just empty threats. Yeah, I like really blonde. Tracy! I fully trust you, Tracy. Messy girl. No. Liar! Sorry, that was loud. Messy girl says, did you watch Dank Fupa yet? She says, no. Liar! Liar, liar, pants on fire. I showed the tweet from Dank Fupa with the screenshot. You posting under that video with the sock account, Charles Reed, that was you. You said, take this down. This is trash. That was you. That was you. You know all about those videos and you are not happy. Not only because they're hilarious and they're completely truthful about you and Salah, but because their animation very well done animation, I might add. There's nothing for you to attack. They're not using your videos. It's made from scratch. It's complete. It's more than just transformative. It's just well done. It just chef's kiss. Nothing you can do. Nothing. A lot of people getting into dank fupa's content. For good reason. They're just well done videos. But her saying, no, I haven't seen them. You lie. You lie like a rug. 
I don't watch people who don't like me. <laughs> you watch everybody that don't like you. <laughs> Is it opposite day? It must be opposite day because she's saying it, the complete opposite of what she means. You watch everybody that don't like you. You watch FFG. You watch all the reaction channels. Girl, you even come over here. You leave comments on my tarot videos. What do you mean? You watch everyone. You are a narcissist. You look for anything that contains your name. Have you been on amazing date nights yet have we been on any day yes for sure i've been having a nice time since i'm back here and i want to get back to my outings during the day girl if you're having a nice time in kuwait why did you gain 13 pounds in one week that doesn't scream of happy times joyful times blissful that screams of i'm sad I am miserable. I am lonely. I am frustrated and I'm comforting myself with food. That's what it tells me. I have to treat my health like my job. I mean, that's technically what it is. Like, you know, it's my job now to take care of. But my you health. don't. So. <laughs> Black Zillion. Hi, Angie. I know you do. Can you tell us about the barbecue you had in the schedule? <laughs> you little, you're a friggin' beezer. As if, as if you remembered that. <laughs> trolls, apparently they, <laughs> there's always trolls on the internet. It's a rule. Imagine going on a drive with a tuna sandwich in the car. Why not? People eat sandwiches in the car all the time. Have you ever eaten a sandwich in the car? Put it in the chat. <laughs> Listen, Turkish, I'm sure people would criticize me if I ordered takeout, went through a drive through At least I was bringing something healthy, you know? Do you know why you get criticism for the fast food, Chantal? It has, it goes back to you because you flip-flop. You'll eat the fast food, then you'll come online and tell us how sick you are. You might even throw in a doctor visit or ER visit you want to get money and sympathy for what's wrong with you. You come on, you tell us about your health problems, your diabetes, your high blood sugar, you're taking metformin. And then after that is a very, very short health journey where you talk about your health. You might show yourself eating one or two healthy meals. You get everybody's hopes up in your chat about getting healthy. They start to get behind you. And then directly, and, and you start acting like nutritionist Chantal, health expert Chantal. And then you go directly to the fast food. And then you say, I know, I know, I know what you're going to say. I don't want to hear it. I mean, this, the cycles are getting faster and faster. You, you, you just won't stick to one thing long enough for change to happen. You're not taking your health seriously. You're not taking your BED seriously. Everything's a joke to you. It's a three ring circus. And guess who the clown is? <laughs> yeah, the cooler weather, I gotta take advantage of it. Cause it's gonna be hot and I'm getting, I don't know. I wanna travel for the whole summer here. It's, you know, there's so many other countries that are just so like they're affordable to stay in for a long period of time. Thailand is so cheap. Well, she's not going to like Thailand when she finds out that they're going to get rid of all those recreational green shops. I know she likes to go there because it's cheaper because of the green shops, but it's not going to be so much fun if the green ain't there, is it, Chantal? Sort of. I can't remember how much we spent. Was it like maybe 7,000 for like a month and a half? That's not bad. Wow. Wait, stop. So Thailand is one of the cheaper places to travel. And she just said they spent $7,000. I know they stayed there for a month, but 
places in Thailand are cheaper. I wonder if a good portion of that had to do with the plane tickets because they had to buy three seats and not just two. And all of the food, like the constant food. When Chantal was in Canada long ago, she told us herself that her food bill was like three or four grand just in her food. That's not counting the snacks that she often ate. That's not counting the Starbucks visits that she would often do daily. That's not counting the visits to the dispensary. So I'm wondering how much of that $7,000 was just, it, it was for stuff that really wasn't needed. Someone ate tuna and broccoli on the plane. Ew. Yeah, when I went to Cuba, I had to sit beside a man who was eating like, I don't know what it was, but. Hi, Princess Key. Oh, the smell. Oh, yeah. I like the smell of tuna fish sandwich. Okay, we're going to stop it here. And she's going to leave the couch. Hold on a minute. Let me play this. All right. I froze it there for a reason. Y'all take a look at that platter. That's her new batch of snacks. Remember the last batch? It didn't look anything like that. It was a basket full of candy bars. There were at least 15 to 20, maybe more 20 candy bars on that platter. That was supposed to be for guests. Although nobody has been at the house except for Chantal. It's a whole new platter with more snacks. <laughs> I mean, what do you say? She's wondering how she gained 13 pounds in one week. Well, there you go. There it is. You're looking for the answer, Chantal? It's right there, literally in front of your face. You got a problem with food? You got a whole platter of chips, candy bars, snacks? You're gonna eat them just because they're there. If you have a problem with food, you don't crave the healthy stuff, you just don't. You'll go for the unhealthy stuff just because it's there and it's convenient. But that's a whole new platter of snacks, y'all. Ugh, I can't. And she's about to eat too. Can we get can we get away? I'm not showing her eating. Screw that. Let's see if we can get past it. I don't care if she's saying anything. I don't care. I'm not I'm not showing her eating. Sorry. <laughs> oh, there we go. This is her yawning. So she's been online and streaming for one hour. And she's tired. That could be her blood sugar. That could be the fact that she just ate a huge meal and her body's sluggish. But she never has any energy for these lives. How much energy does it take to stream for an hour and a half? You're just talking. You're not doing anything physical. But yet she's always freaking tired. Even sitting still, she's tired. Excuse me. Oh my God, goodness, I'm going to go to bed soon. I mean, if you want to do a live and you don't have any energy, just go to bed. And then when you wake up and you're refreshed and you got energy and you feel alert, that's when you do a live. When you can pay attention to the chat, you can talk to people, not when you're so tired that you're not even paying attention. You want to go beddy bed? Who's hairy with them? Well, people, yep. So Lexi Lamington says, I guess talking about FFG, saying, did she say something to warrant that post today? Frenchie didn't say anything about BBJ. What's going on with Chantal is that she wants attention. She wants to get the attention on her because Salah isn't giving her attention and she's mad at him. So when she gets mad at him, 
She'll go online and take out her anger on everybody else because she doesn't have the courage to take her anger to the person that's causing it. She wants to use YouTube and the reactors and the audience as punching bags. And she doesn't like it when the punching bags punch back. She can dish it, but she can't take it. Thanks, Joanne, for being here. Rebe, they're probably similar. I don't know. I don't really shop online much anymore. I don't really shop like, I don't know. I'm just tired. Like I've lived my whole life, mostly my adult life, just blowing money on crap I don't need and thinking that it made me feel better. And in the long run, it just makes your life worse. So I'm... Uh... Okay, I want to say something that may sound kind of mean, but it's not meant to be mean. Did Chantal used to spend a lot of money on useless crap? Yes. But that was before she moved to Kuwait and she had to support Salah and buy the car and all of that. But as far as her online shopping, as far as clothes are concerned, the bigger she gets, the harder it's going to be to find things that fit her. Maybe that's part of the reason why she doesn't like to buy clothes online because she's, she, whatever she buys, whatever she manages to find in her size, she keeps gaining weight. And either it doesn't fit when she gets it, or if it does, it barely fits. And yet she won't motivate herself to lose some of the weight. So she's over here trying to paint this picture of, I'm just trying to be smarter with my money, da 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 No. The problem is you got to pay the rent on the apartment. You got to pay for Salah, whatever he gets. You got to pay for the car. You got to make sure to have at least five grand for food and snacks. So you don't have much money left over for Amazon or Timu or whatever. You got a lot to pay for. And your paychecks are getting smaller because your content sucks. <laughs> the camels. Oh, a connecting flight in Doha. 38 degrees. Yeah, that airport is awesome, but it's really huge. Thank you. I look like a Van Gogh. <laughs> And I do. The hypocrisy of it all. Every drama channel is worse than the people they try to tear down. I know. I've been known. I've been new, sis. Ugh. Um, no, I didn't cook today. We had a chicken. We picked up a chicken with hummus and bread. Oh, um, what was I going to say? I can't remember. Oh, the camels. So the camels are owned by Kuwaitis. I don't um, want to hear about the camels. Um, yeah, just like if you take Emirates, you usually stop have a stopover in their airport in Dubai, which I don't like that airport. Hello, Annie P. chicken today. Miss Julia, older traditional type markets and places, then they have like extreme luxury. I'm looking to see if she's got anything else worth talking about. Like, I don't care for these, you know, like boring conversational points. I'm looking for the stuff of interest. We're almost done, y'all. We got like less than what, 20 minutes left. I'm just, I'm just going to pick right through it. <laughs> Let's see if there's anything else here. Yeah. Uh, go to Dubai. I don't know. She don't want to go to Dubai. <laughs> Dubai is a very expensive place. 
Dubai is also a playground for the hot, the rich, and the fabulous. For the young people, the true jet setters, the go-getters, the movers, the shakers. She would stick out like a sore thumb. Can y'all imagine someone like Chantal in Dubai with all the hot, the young, the rich, and the fabulous? <laughs> Not a good fit. I don't know about that. You too, Blacks. I hope you have a good week. Hi, Lolo. I didn't look for my Fitbit yet. <laughs> I have to. I think my phone has a tracker, no? Now I'm starting to get hot. Look at my face changing and I'm sweating. Okay, next. Wow. So someone in her chat, is it Sheena says, are you at all concerned about your size? Been a while and it's startling to see you now. Like, yeah, the difference. Chantal likes to act. Oh, I just gained 20 pounds. Girl, you gained more than 20 pounds. A lot. You were almost at 400 when you were with BB and that was back in 2017. Anybody who looks at videos from then, how you look then to how you look now, it's about 150 pounds difference. So you are well into the 500 pound range. So anybody that stopped watching you for a while, seeing you now, they can tell you're, you're definitely looking different. Look at my muscular fingers. I mean, this is, this is not me fat shaming Chantal, just putting things in perspective. Y'all can see me on camera. There's no filters here. I'm five foot four and I've got a kind of a petite build, about 130 pounds, I would say. I haven't been on the scale in a while, but Chantal's shorter than me. She's like five feet tall. So she's smaller. She's supposed to be smaller than me. And she's got a big head and look at the way her head looked compared to the rest of her body. She is gigantic and she's got a small, tiny frame. I mean, you can, you can see me like Chantal and I, like we're, we're close in, in height difference. I'm about four inches taller, but she's a shorty like me. And like the, the body size difference is startling, isn't it? It is. She's supposed to be about 115. 120, 125 pounds, and she's over 500. Too much. What's your favorite perfume? Beezer spray. Arborator cleaner. You would die. Those fumes are dangerous. I was feeling dizzy. I started spraying my oven, and then I was like, and I was feeling like, what the heck? And I look at the bottle, I'm like, carburetor fluid. Come to Denver. The airport is terrifying. Yeah, I would still like to be in Kuwait. I don't want to, we don't, we don't want to go to Canada. You don't want to go to Canada. I'm sure he'd love to come to Canada. He'd love to be anywhere that you were not included. <laughs> you don't want to go to Canada because the tax man is waiting for you in Canada. And you don't have a home anymore in Canada. Maybe that was part of the reason why you came back to Kuwait because getting a place in Canada would require about five or six grand in pocket, maybe more, depending on where you went. And with your bankruptcies on record, one of them still ongoing, you would have a lot of trouble finding a place to live. And you knew that. And you knew that since you had already had an apartment that you were paying for in Kuwait, you ran all the way back here. So without that apartment back in Canada, where would you go? A Motel 6? Now that would be karmic justice. <laughs> if Chantal ended up in a Motel 6, all the crap, all the trash, she talked about Motel 6. Wouldn't it just be lovely 
to see her end up in a Motel 6 room. I wonder if she'd still talk crap about it then. Like, I don't want to go for a while. The thing, I want to try. the thing is, Chantal, you're still a tourist. It's been a year. You're on a tourist visa. You cannot live in Kuwait. You can hide out there. You can escape there. You can stay away from the tax man there, but eventually you're going to have to leave. They're going to find out that you're there some way, somehow. They might notice how often you keep leaving and coming back and stamp your passport as you cannot return. So whether you like it or not, eventually you're going to have to go and you're going to have to leave law behind anyway. Oh, well. Baking soda and vinegar. Really Italian? <laughs> live on it. Going live on it. I see a lot of people going live. It makes me want to do it. Oh, look at that. I, I love it. I love all of this. What do we love about Chantal here, ladies and gentlemen? What do we love? What are the two things about Chantal that we absolutely adore? We love the fact that she lies and the fact that she tells on herself. She just told on herself. Let's listen to that one more time. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Mm. Say it again. Wear glasses like a thousand dollar. I know. Say it again. Starbucks has a drive through in your lights. Deborah, I have a TikTok. I want to try doing live on it, going live on it. I see a lot of people going live. It makes me want to do it. That's why she went live. That's why she went live earlier. Because she's on YouTube and she sees people going live and doing their live chats. So rather than wait for the reactors to not be live, she's gonna go live while they're live. And she's gonna do it on purpose because she knows that people in the reaction channel audience, they're gonna let the reactors know Chantal is live. And this live that she did is called Make Me Laugh, which points in the direction that she's upset which might lead to a rage. She clickbaited. She wasn't upset here. She wasn't raging, but there's a possibility. You just never know with her. She did a rage post earlier. She was setting things up to do this live and get some extra views. Do the rage post, go off, make people think she's gonna rage in a live, wait for some of the reactors to go live. She goes live. Some of the reactions are like, she's live. What's going on? And then she's going to turn right the F around and say, I hate when they stream snipe me. You set things in motion while the reactors are live for them to be interested in you because you want those hate views. Girl, stop it. Stop it. You wanted some attention. So you made everybody believe that you were upset about something. It started with the community post, then scheduling a live with a title, making people think you were upset, doing your live in the middle of other people's lives, not even waiting your turn. Not that you have to, but I'm just saying. You want people to hate watch you. It don't matter if they're hate watching you or love watching you. They're watching. Erie Pepperoni was live earlier. She was all set to review something else. You went live. And then when you went live, nothing. This. Boring. You're not even there to entertain the people. You got nothing to say. You got nothing to do. Why go live? Why? Because you want attention. 
and you're mad when you see reactors online entertaining their audiences. You don't know how to entertain an audience, nor do you care to learn. You just want attention. And you're not getting it from the one person you want it the most from because he's busy giving his attention to the ladies in the red room. It's 10 p.m., Chantal. Where's your husband? Stuffed peppers. Uh... Oh, okay. You had teardrop. Yeah, I'm getting off scene anyway. I'm Look at this graphy map. This, this this happened when, when Erie was live, saying, Erie Pepperoni is stream sniping you. She was about to review something else, like I said. And then Hagatha over here decided she wanted to go live. And people in her chat told her, yeah, foodie's live. So, you know, we're going to take a peek, see what's going on. Chantal's fault. She could have waited to do this. There's nothing extraordinary here. She could have waited until the reactors were done to lessen the chance of stream sniping. She knew what she was doing. But, you know, go ahead and snitch, Beezers. We don't care. <laughs> Even if we're stream sniping her, what can she do? Not a doggone thing. Go ahead and tell her that she's being stream sniped. Go ahead and tell her. Have a good night. The nuggets are not gone. Hi, Rosalia. What? Erie pepperoni is a hideous beast. Have you seen Erie dreaming of Everest? Have you seen her? She is gorgeous. Beautiful woman with epic eyebrows. She got that epic eyebrow game. Are you serious? She's not hideous. Stop hating. You are a hater. Hating on. You probably never even seen her. I have. Beautiful woman is eerie. <laughs> Lavazza is so good Italian. I had that in my vlog. They had a Lavazza store. Dreaming of Everest. I really dislike that woman. Then stay out of her chat. You, you don't have to like Gary. You don't have to respect her. Just stay out of her chat. Stay over in Chantal's chat. After a few days. Uh, yeah, she's vile from what I hear. I don't watch. Look at that. Mentioning Erie. She's really vile. <laughs> You're so mad. <laughs> Erie's got a real husband that she didn't pay for. That loves her. You mad, Chantal? Are you mad? You're mad. Sure, I don't know. But I hear people say that, Everest. <laughs> Anyone happy and not miserable in life is not um, watching someone just to make fun of them and to cut them down all the time so whatever cabbage doesn't love you i, I feel you i love pickle cabbage how do you know being around someone all the time well you have to really enjoy being around that person otherwise you're gonna go nuts well that would explain everything going on with you you're not happy being around salah and honestly like you are I'm not a doctor. I'm not diagnosing you, but in, in your own way, emotionally speaking, you're going insane. You're, you're spinning your wheels. You don't know how to cope. You're using food to cope. You're not happy around Salah. He's not happy around you. And the unhappier you are, the more you turn to food, the more weight you're going to gain. <laughs> yeah, I like Labasa. I don't listen to Ariana Grande. I can't stand her, her music. Sorry. Kiana. Heidi Ho says, do you watch Skinny Queen Reacts? I do. Great reactor. Some of these beezers, man, they are just deliberately mentioning the reaction channels because 
I think they want Chantal to rage. They're bringing up the reactors deliberately to get her to rage. So <laughs> it's not just the reactors in our audience that want her to rage as her own freaking beezers. <laughs> rage, more rage, rage, more rage. <laughs> They're as bored with her as we are. Oh, I see, Messy. Those are good lyrics. <laughs> oh. You watch Skinny Queen reacts. You have to be trolling, Heidi Ho. <laughs> <laughs> if I want to listen to white noise when I'm going to bed. I, I saw someone say that she sounds like a long fart, and I just, I can't. I'm sorry. That was hilarious. <laughs> is it kiana or kina <clears throat> anyways if you could make a flavored gum like on willy wonka that when you chew it it tastes like things what would you make it rebe <laughs> yeah i feel good egg world traveler you're always squinting. Why can't you get glasses? It's on the list of things to do. Yeah, but the thing is, you were just in Canada. And you said you went to the eye doctor. So why didn't you get glasses then? Why didn't you get glasses? You were right there in Canada. Why? Why didn't you get glasses when you had the chance? Why haven't you gotten glasses since being back in Kuwait? If you're going to be online, for several hours a day scrolling on your phone, which is bad, so bad for your eyes. It puts a strain on your eyes. If you're gonna be doing these live streams again, why not get some freaking glasses? I mean, hello, you guys see me, I'm wearing reader glasses. I don't have prescription glasses. I, I gotta use these to see, right? Th to read stuff on the screen. Otherwise the words, they look all blurry and stuff. I got freaking glasses. What's her excuse? Thanks for the super chat. Chantal, get glasses, please. <laughs> strawberry? There's already strawberry gum, Lexi. It has to be weird. Like, what about stuffed peppers? Jeez. <laughs> oh, Orange chicken gum. Nashi gum. <gasps> yes, Sarah. I saw that infomercial for that bra. I was like, um, never ask people to thumbs up. I always forget. <laughs> yeah, the, the bra thing was funny. She was like reading a script and had <laughs> that weird music on. She was like, okay, are we done here? <laughs> we got five minutes left and she's, I, I'm going to sleep with Chantal. <laughs> When you when you start to feel that sensation of like, man, I'm going to sleep with her. It's time to go. You know, if the movie's starting to get down to the end and, and it's looking boring, it's time to get up out of your seat and leave the theater. So I'm leaving the theater. But I thank you guys for being here. And I hope you guys enjoyed this react. And if you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye now.